Since we're well into the offseason and free agency at this point, many of the high-profile trades and signings have already happened. However, there's still a few players that are left in the fold that haven't made a commitment for next season. Therefore, in this video, we'll be going over a few free agents, their situations, and where they may end up next. And with that, here are three NHL free agents and where they may end up. For the first time out of his entire career, P.K. Subban is evaluating his options as a free agent. Over the span of the eight years that his $72 million contract ran for, Subban was a part of three different teams. From Montreal to Nashville and lastly New Jersey, Subban has gained a lot of experience throughout his lengthy career thus far. However, it's fair to say that he's far from the same defenseman that captured the Norris nearly a decade ago. Subban is likely self-aware and is probably expecting to take a pay cut with his chosen team. But when it comes to the selection process, his agent revealed that his client is going to be taking his time. Without sounding too aggressive, I think he's earned the privilege to be somewhat selective of where he would play so that it works for the team and that it works for him. In other words, he doesn't want to just play anywhere he says. This obviously means that for Subban to sign with the team, it has to be the right fit all around. At this point in time, the projections for Subban's next contract lie just shy of $4 million a season at 3.8. Currently, at 33 years of age, Subban can still bring physicality, leadership, and some limited offense from the back end. Last season, after 77 games played, he was able to record 22 points with five of those being goals. When it comes down to teams that could benefit from Subban's services, a few that stand out are Toronto, Edmonton, and possibly Dallas. Subban's agent also recently pointed out that his client is waiting things out in order to give teams a chance to move money and make more room cap-wise. What we know about Edmonton and Toronto specifically is that they could have a need for Subban on their blue line, but we'll have to make a move or two first to bring him in. In oil country, there's the whole Tyson Berry debacle. If he's traded, then it would be more logical to add Subban in on the right side and give him that limited role. They also have Jesse Pugliarvi's contract that they could move to if need be. Toronto would almost be the same scenario if Justin Hole was traded, then it would allow for Subban to be the replacement. If he was given more of a sheltered role at this point in his career, he could be beneficial and also bring intangibles to the lineup as well. Similarly to Subban, Phil Kessel is entering the latter stages of his career. At 34 years of age, Kessel, who's made over 91 million so far, has pretty much done it all. Two Stanley Cups and several All-Star game appearances later, the league's current Iron Man probably isn't going to be chasing after the bag, but rather, what fit is best for him? Even though he did have some very lackluster production last campaign, it's hard to tell if it's been age catching up or just circumstantial, due to not being on the best team. With a mere 8 goals notched last season and 52 points in a full season's play, spectators have to be wondering if Kessel has more to give. Now, the interesting part to all of this is that Kessel is projected to be worth about $1.9 million a year, which means that there could be some upside in recruiting him. It wouldn't be a huge risk, and he could still be effective on the power play especially. A couple teams that could have some interest in Kessel's services are the Edmonton Oilers, Florida Panthers, and the Pittsburgh Penguins. GM Ken Holland demonstrated last season that he's not afraid to take risks, as he took a huge gamble on signing Evander Kane pun intended, since there is still a chance that he could find his game again while playing with Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, Holland might be willing to take it. This was actually a concept that was brought up on Elliot Friedman's 32 Thoughts podcast, as Friedman reasoned that the mediocre roster in Arizona could have hindered Kessel's offensive prowess. Co-host Jeff Merrick also believed he'd have no trouble scoring. If Kessel does wait until closer to the season's start date, to sign, it would give Edmonton a chance to free up some space by putting Oscar Clefbaum and Mike Smith on the IR. After losing Claude Giroux, Mason Marchment, and others this offseason, the Panthers could be looking to bolster their bottom six. Knowing how much Kessel loves his golf, this 
could be an ideal destination for him and his young family. Pittsburgh does have a very weak bottom six as well, and considering Jason Zucker's track record, it's hard to picture him playing more than half of a season healthy. So if Brian Burke did decide to recruit Kessel, who he's familiar with, the ultimate question would be if Kessel would be able to coexist with head coach Mike Sullivan. Sullivan and Kessel had a rather strained relationship which reportedly led to the forward being traded to Arizona thereafter. Probably the highest profile free agent that's still in the markets, Nazem Kadri is and has been a target for multiple teams. Coming off of a six year, $27 million contract that he signed in Toronto, Kadri especially, towards the latter portion of the deal, made it a bargain. It's not every day that a player that's making $4 million a season records 87 points in 71 games played. And obviously, there's a reason for that. With that being said, since Kadri has seemingly played his way out of Denver, unless a move is made to free up some space, the Avs won't be able to hold on to their second line center. But one team that's definitely willing to take advantage of Colorado's predicament is the New York Islanders. After really doing much of nothing all summer, GM Lou Lamorello could be reuniting with Kadri sooner rather than later. Kadri, who's reportedly looking for a long-term deal, would definitely help the Islanders get better. But the problem that many have been pointing out is that the Islanders are already well-established at center. Signing Kadri would ultimately mean that either he or Matt Barzell would be moving to wing in results. Another issue that Lou has on his hands is obviously the cap. Even though they do technically have 11 million to work with, this is an illusion of sorts, due to the fact that Noah Dobson, Alex Romanoff, and Kepper Bellows all need fresh contracts. However, the solution could be trading off a player like Josh Bailey or Anthony Bavillier. Obviously, for the GM, it'll be about evaluating all the pros and cons of each hypothetical scenario in order to arrive at a decision.